What up, folks? Welcome to Thursday night. It is 7.40 p.m. New York time. We're going to make a banana bread loaf, probably tiny, because my dad ended up eating two of my three bananas that I have been planning on making banana bread out of. These are all bananas that were gifted to me by Grandma over the last week. Um, he didn't seem to want to go out to eat with me, but was also hungry and asked me if I had bananas. And lo and behold, I did. I normally don't, but I did. So I gave the less ripe ones to him. Now we're left with one banana. I think maybe we can puree the other two pears that were simmered yesterday into a paste again and then make a banana pear nut loaf with some mixed nuts round up later. Um, and we're also going to roast some sweet potatoes for grandma. So that's what we're going to do. 12.40 a.m. in England. I see you. You should be going to sleep. How do you turn snickerdoodles into pie crust? Mmm. It would be more of a tart crust. I think you would combine a little bit more mm, butter and flour in there possibly um, but if you wanted like an actual pie crust where it holds together versus a graham cracker crust which is what I'm imagining more of um, I don't know how that would work You'd probably have to work it into some flour and liquid so um, what a California um, Sorry I can't serenade you on your commute home, but I hope it, it is a safe commute. Um, eyes on the road. Eyes on the road. So the first thing we're going to get started with is washing the sweet potatoes. I went to Salvation Army with Samira today and ended up thrifting a fork that is now in the dishwasher and a glass. I wanted to give myself some retail therapy and that's what I got. And then on my way back, I passed by HF, Do uh, HF Dollar and Up. Um, it's the fruit grocery store that I used to go to very often for Budget Eats. And we picked up some dollar bags of carrots, which I should probably also roast, as well as broccoli and sweet potatoes. So we're just going to turn the oven on today. I am, again, sicker. I don't know what's going on. I think this is maybe my third or fourth time feeling feverish. Um, I ended up taking a nap in the afternoon after coming back from shopping with Samira and not going anywhere. Um, and I ate a bunch of veggies and some crackers and some yogurt and um, I don't I don't really know what's going on anymore. This feels very abnormal. I've never really been sick for this long at this hold steady of a severity like it's not severe as you can see I can still function but I'm just like constantly feeling better and then every third or fourth day I feel worse so is this COVID is this like a new variant of COVID that's doing this to me absolutely clueless I'm super confounded um, very confused, very disappointed. I basically missed out on so many holiday um, gatherings with friends, but it is what it is. I guess we're friends now too, so <laughs> we get to hang out together while I'm sick. Um, I'm not too bummed about it, but there is a kind of like loneliness that is sinking in at this point because, um, you know, I would like to see friends in a more intimate setting. Um, sit down with them with a mask off. It was kind of a bummer actually thinking about it that it was my first time seeing my dad in basically five years and he didn't even get to see my face because I was masked the whole time. He's turning 70 next year so um, I didn't want to accidentally get my dad sick too. Um, so uh, Okay, I have to ask the folks who said they thought they had COVID and tested negative, did you do a rapid test or a PCR? Um, because I've only been rapid testing myself at home, and I'm starting to think that that shit is really unreliable with all these new variants. Like, maybe we're just not. See? I don't think rapid works anymore. Because me too. Anyway, dollar bags of sweet potatoes. Awesome. So yeah, 
Maybe this is COVID then, huh? And I absolutely don't disagree that stress definitely played a huge part in me getting sick, but it is also just like so confounding. These symptoms are so strange. I've never had this up and down roller coaster of severity and recovery before. Um, very confusing that's all my body is currently in a low grade tense ache right now it kind of feels like I woke up from my nap wrong that kind of ache Yeah, I guess I don't really know what long COVID is, but this probably is some sort of long COVID at this point, you know? Um, yeah, man, who knows anymore? But hey, a week of no work, a week of up and down sickness and um, You know, a week of hanging out with strangers on the internet. I am still kind of nasally, but not as stuffy, that's for sure. I haven't had a lot of mucus as of late, but like this today, it started at 11 a.m., me feeling light chills, and then it got worse. Um, as I shopped around with Samira, and then when I came home, I ate um, because I knew I wanted to sleep, but I also knew that I should probably eat, and then I jumped into the shower, and then as I was in the shower, it was like the worst sensation ever because the water was either too cold or too hot, and it's not my shower because my shower isn't like that kind of shower where it's super sensitive to, you know, being fucked with on, on that um, temperature gauge it's truly just like my body not being able to tolerate the temperature um, fluctuations as much and that's when I knew that I was probably getting feverish so I popped an ibuprofen and hopped into bed and then started reading an article on my phone and then fell asleep and then dreamed I, I've been dreaming since I've been off of weed for like three weeks now um, I've smoked weed maybe twice when I was with friends in those three weeks, but because I haven't been smoking weed every night, I've been dreaming a lot more, and oh boy, dreams, I forgot about them. Anyway, how was everyone's Thursdays? You good? You bad? You feeling numb? You feeling motivated? You feeling happy? Okay, so the middle back pain tension, I highly recommend that you get one of those rubbery handballs and you roll yourself on your bed or on the floor or against the wall with it. It, um, I'm too lazy to do it most days, but in a pinch, it will really help you out. <laughs> you ate 10 weed gummies? What is the dosage? Christmas tired. Okay. 
some of us some of us have different kinds of pains we all go through it yes you are off work tomorrow let's go what are you gonna do on your day you're gonna sleep you're gonna eat you're gonna laugh you're gonna watch a movie you're gonna listen to music you're gonna cry about a heartbreak I've been doing all those things um what up kate from london not new here just not silent anymore okay speak up <laughs> welcome to chat i'm really leaning into my live stream days now i feel like uh until i get over whatever illness this is until we have ceasefire um until my life feels less tenuous i probably won't be making any food videos anymore um so these live streams are gonna be it for the foreseeable future until we have a fucking ceasefire all your favorite things in lower manhattan i did not know you lived in new york city what are your favorite things in lower manhattan i would love to know oh so how much is 100 milligrams worth of gummies these days what is the market going price for such an amount of weed i know i'm kind of sad too penny but like life just doesn't feel good right now you know and i I know that a couple of my latest personal food videos were kind of depression oriented and sadness infiltrated, but now I'm just like even beyond depression now. Now this is just like depression is life. Um, so I really have to take some time to, you know, think about first of all, how to get better. Like this health is not sustainable. 15 bucks. That's pretty cheap, I think. Yeah, I feel like in New York City it would be more like 40 to 50 for sure. But, interesting, okay. I'm not very knowledgeable about gummies and edibles because I um, just don't do edibles. Sydney is expensive, note to self, do not buy weed there. <laughs> I've never heard of Ikudo, Aaron Loves, and a Levan cookie. You fancy. Um, if you like udon in Lower Manhattan, there's this shop with two different locations, I believe, called Raku. Um, R A K U. I haven't been in a few years, probably since the pandemic, but I just remember their udon being so delicious. It's not a round udon noodle. It's like a rectangular prism sort of udon noodle, and it's, I believe, made in-house, and they have a mochi add-on. You can add a slice of mochi, and that mochi is also homemade, and it has such a different texture than other mochis I've had. Highly recommend. Um, so we're going to stab with a fork and hope I don't jab my fingers. You know, I go into this sight loop, um, thought loop sometimes that are just like, wow, you need to cook all of these things. You better move fast or you're going to be here forever. And I actually think that um, that kind of thinking used to cause me a lot of stress and it still does. But now I'm more aware of the fact that that might be a product of capitalism. 
because who said that I have to do all of these things on one live and tonight? And who says that I have to do it as fast as possible? And who says I can't take a break when I feel like I need a break, even if I didn't finish the task that I had set off to do? What, what are all these mechanisms making all these rules in my brain telling me what I should do and making me feel inferior when I can't achieve these own arbitrary goals that I set for myself out of nowhere, even though I don't need all of these sweet potatoes done? Or a banana loaf cake done, or, or anything, really. I don't, I don't really have to do anything at the end of the day. So, thought processes. Um, so, Raku is not cheap. I think the app appetizers are like anywhere from 9 to 16 and then a bowl of udon before the pandemic was already like 16 to 19 so it's probably higher now but I will say their appetizers are some of the most like Japanese tasting Japanese food I've had in New York City it's just so pure in its presentation of the ingredients natural um, characteristics and flavors it definitely has that like umami seafood quality to all of it but it's not so strong and Aaron never had monkfish liver before until we ate there and then he learned that he loves monkfish liver so there's a lot of really cool kind of like traditional basic Japanese apps on the menu there that I highly recommend they're just pretty small servings and they're not cheap so you know like know your budget maybe go with a friend try a few things um one appetizer is probably good for two to three nibbles for two people or like a nibble each for four people um so that's that's the general vibe all right we're gonna turn this oven up to 370 and we're gonna slide this in to wash broccoli. One dollar bags of broccoli. Penny, I'm not really sure what you're asking me. Been having a lot of good luck with one dollar bags recently and feeling blessed that the, the vegetable gods have looked upon me with grace um, oh yeah Penny do you know that I'm not with Delish anymore do you know that they fired me last October cooking I'm just not editing video or recording it in a format that you're maybe more used to seeing um, but I'm still here doing my thing saying my shit being my crazy Yeah, you didn't know about the delish. Okay, that makes a lot more sense now. Have you seen the videos that I shot and edited myself on this channel? Not related to delish channel?
I think some people don't pay attention to the channel when they watch videos and they just see the same face and they're like, oh, it's the same person making the same videos. Yeah, no. I will. I mean, I am cooking crazy things. Just the world is too crazy now for me. So, you know, I can step back on my crazy and just absorb what the world has to offer right now because it's a lot. Everything in my life is Yuri. Um, I told Samira that my life has literally entered the shit stage. Um, I went to see grandma today. Not the first time that I've noticed it, but there's literally shit smears on her toilet seat now. Um, she has fantasies about people coming to take her away from incoming attacks and war So she's constantly going through her closet and packing up her clothes and trash bags and getting ready to run And she's like piling clothes onto herself in case you know she needs to be prepared with more clothes um, And her sleeves are too long so when she goes to wipe herself her sleeves get shit on it And then the shit gets on her blanket so today we like had to do an overhaul of her blankets and do an overhaul of her clothes and I was just like sitting there washing her lunch containers and wiping her her shit off the seat and I was just like okay we're here this is where we are cool the day has come next chapter I mean, I keep thinking it won't be much longer now because she, she keeps cooking up these scenarios of, um, you know, having to escape and getting ready to go home, quote unquote. And I'm just like, you know, sure, I kind of can't wait for you to be at peace and I kind of can't wait to not have to do this anymore. But I feel like given her physical energy, it's probably going to be a, a while longer. Um, it doesn't seem like her stamina is that much more worse off um it's just like her mentality is getting more intensified and i really i really 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 think it has to do with the fact that she's rejecting my um invitations to take walks now so she's just stuck indoors it's basically like almost like solitary confinement in a way and without any stimulus besides my daily visit um she's starting to cook up her own reality and I really you know like I don't I can't force her to go outside and I'm really exhausted already mentally and physically um so I'm not even going to try anymore to convince her to go outside but she she has had no desire to go outside either so it's on the one hand worrying and on the other it perfectly makes sense why her mental state is decreasing and declining um because you know when you don't have outside contact for that long, yeah, you're gonna go a little bonkers. Um, so, that's, that's what's been going on. If you guys keep asking for grandma updates, you know, like, it's just gonna be more of this, unfortunately. And I was making sure, you know, part of, Part of calling uncle in every day is so that he can see grandma and grandma can see him, but part of it is also to clue him into like how rough this is. I don't want him to get the easy ticket out of like just not being hands on at all with his own aging mother here in a foreign country. I still feel a little bit of a grudge for him not stepping forward, um, but I've also decided that this is just the decision that I made. Um, to so-called finish the job for my mom so that's where we're at but yeah I want him to see what this is what this is and I also want him to see not just
for him to see like, hey, I'm, I'm doing this for grandma, like, know that it isn't easy, know what goes on here on a daily basis. But I also want him to see because I want everyone to know that this is what aging looks like. I want him to know that if he ever lives to this age, this is what he's going to do to his own daughter. Um, this is what we're all going to potentially amount to in our age. I just want him to be aware of, of this possibility um, so that he knows the kinds of burden that we may place on our loved ones when we start to decline like this. And I don't, I, I'm, I'm saying it in like a blunt, mean way because I am bitter. There is no denying that there is so much difficulty and bitterness moving through me right now. But also, on the other hand, I just also want people to acknowledge the fact that, like, we cherish birth so much, but we don't illuminate the harsh realities of dying and death. And we, we, I think this helps me put into perspective what it means to actually value life, what it means for us to celebrate life without celebrating death, without preparing for death, without acknowledging death, without acknowledging all the shit, the literal shit that happens before death comes. Um, and this anger is less about my anger towards my uncle or, or you know, my mom for not letting me help her before she died and left all of this for me alone to handle, but also anger towards the world for kind of feeding us the propaganda of living is always good and for making us live as if the best thing you can do for yourself is to stay alive forever um because maybe we should start to actually devalue life in a certain way in order to value life more does that make sense i know it's paradoxical i think we are so focused on qual quantity over quality in terms of living longer that we don't think about what it means to actually live and what it means to actually die, and what it means to actually live a life worth living. Why is it that we consider it a tragedy to die at 60 versus 90? Like, everyone told me when mom died, oh, that's too young. And I've had two years now to think about this. And honestly, yeah, I realize that I'm still grieving and probably speaking from a place of grief and shock. Um, but also, why is it worse for us to think about dying at the age of 60 versus 90? I don't actually think it is. So I'd like to push back on that. So, you know, like, we have to witness dying as much as we witness living because they are really, truly the same thing. And if we continue to kind of cleave the two into a binary opposition, we will never appreciate what it means to live a meaningful life because our meaning has been centered around continuing to survive. Um, I don't know what the meaning to life is, not even for myself. I'm not talking like meaning to life with capital M's and L's. I'm just talking, you know, my life, meaning. I don't know. But I know that it's not living for as long as possible. And I know that it's not being like as fit and healthy as possible. And I know that it's not being as rich as possible, you know? And I didn't realize all of this until the last three years. I think we have to rethink the value. And I think about the fact, like I've been thinking about the paradox of me buying dollar bags of vegetables that are like some, sometimes not prime, you know, sometimes they're just like, e. Um, and then thinking about like what it means to learn to be more comfortable with giving other people money who are, you know, asking for it on the trains. And, and 
I think it was a, maybe a month ago when I was on the train, maybe I to told you guys about how I just ended up grabbing the first bill out of my wallet for someone and it was a 20 and I had that moment of hesitation of like, oh my god, it's a 20, like I'm giving someone a 20 a week on walks to digest the fact that I can afford better food but I can also afford to like eat cheaper food and give that money to someone else who literally has nothing um, and that 20 will give them way more food than that 20 could go for me at a restaurant um, and just like it's started to make me think about, oh, it's not always about the, the quantity of things. It's not always about the dollar amount of things. It's like all the invisible guarantees of life that I have that like maybe someone else doesn't have. Um, and it makes me think about like the more invisible aspects of, yeah, like my mental health isn't great and maybe other people's mental health is better than mine or worse than mine. And like how we can't really judge based on what I'm doing and what you're doing in purely quantifiable um, metrics. So all of which to say is just keep thinking, keep questioning, keep allowing yourself to change your mind. Um, quality stream going south. Mm. It's been raining here a lot. And sometimes my T-Mobile internet goes bad. Um, but thank you for letting me know and keep letting me know when the quality is too bad and we can restart or something, I don't know. Okay, good now, yay. Sometimes all it takes is an open window. You know what? I don't know. But the, the window is the only thing I changed. baking is extremely soothing for me. I remember walking the streets of Beijing and all the street vendors selling roasted sweet potatoes. That smell is so like tied into childhood for me. Sweet potatoes are also so big in Japan too. Where I lived for a year when I was a wee little toddler. Um, I basically ate all of the kale that we cooked yesterday and all of the cauliflower that we cooked yesterday and somehow I'm not bloated to hell. Um, so yeah, something definitely is going on with my body. I'm not sure what's happening. Maybe this is a metamorphosis. Maybe I'm turning superhuman. If I survive this, who knows? Who knows who I'll be? But if I survive this, let's get excited.
yo, a lot of us have been feeling pretty rough. Um, so just give yourself some time to rest and let the shit move through you, literally. Um, and I think I appreciate it when you guys say thanks, but also very aware of the fact that I need to thank you equally to, for being here and kind of giving me a purpose of sorts for going live and having company while I cook, you know? I guess this is what they mean by community. We need each other. As strange as it is to call internet strangers community, this is the world that we live in. Let's refill our pepper. Video quality is still extremely blotchy. Is it true for all of you? Let me see if I turn off my phone Wi-Fi, if that helps. Um, yeah, I don't know guys, sorry. My internet just isn't great here, unfortunately. I can also turn off my um, computer Wi-Fi. So you said it got better and then it got worse again, so it's not the window. Um, what I can do is turn on my phone hotspot and we can try doing that if you want to disconnect for a second. But it's out of my control at this point. A hotspot off of um, visible network, which is Verizon rather than T-Mobile, is my only other option. for half an hour and then we'll get started on this banana bread <laughs> the green blob okay um have you ever experienced audio not syncing too jesus christ 